Welcome everyone, today we are going to learn how to handle color palettes, gradients and fill patterns in ProMotion NG. The color palette in ProMotion NG is a so-called indexed color palette. If I use this blue palette entry to draw on the screen and then modify this color in the palette, it will directly affect all pixels using this color slot. Every pixel is an index using the corresponding color in the palette. To create a new color, we go to any unused slot and double-click on it. This will open an extended dialog to define the color in different color spaces. By default, you can choose colors out of 16.8 million different provided by full RGB color space. In the video for creating a new project I mentioned the settings for color channels to reduce the number of overall colors I can choose from. This helps me to select sets of colors that have a uniformly distance from each other. You can reduce the color space with menu, color, modify channel bit depth. I have currently chosen 6 bits per color channel, and we will reduce it even more now to just 3 bits so you see what it does. But this reduces the number of colors too much, so we continue with 4 bits. The dialog to define a color has lots of options. In the top left area, you can choose from different color space displays based on different color models. Square uses a horizontal rainbow panel to define the base color and the square above defines saturation and brightness. RGB wheel lets you select the base color and the saturation in the upper wheel and the brightness is selected in the panel below. RYB wheel is almost the same thing but it creates the base color on the wheel in a different way, favoring more yellow. LCH wheel uses a color model that prefers those colors that can be better perceived by human eye. It's mostly a matter of taste what you want to use in certain situations. To the right you can see the color that you have chosen and the one then was initially defined when you opened the dialog. The small color slots allow you to store color presets with your right mouse button and to pick them with the left mouse button. Below you have color sliders that change the color components for the selected color model like RGB or HSB. Below the sliders you can see color panels that show how the color would look like when you move the slider there. You can also directly click on these panels. Play around to find the type of color model and edit modes that is satisfying to you. The web slash hex edit field allows you to enter or pick standard RGB color values directly. This can help to share color values between different programs. There are more options in the dialog such as harmonies and scales. Color harmonies help you to find color combinations that can be used. There are different types of harmonies and they are derived from positions on the color wheel. For example, complementary is just the color that is directly on the other side of the wheel. Analogous uses colors that are 30 degrees away. The other harmonies form triangles or squares on the wheel. Below the harmonies different standard scales are shown. The currently selected color is used in the middle of every panel and it is scaled to left and right by decreasing and increasing the corresponding color component, lightness, saturation or hue. These harmonies and scales can help to find matching color combinations and contrasts in a simple way. But you can also play around with color shades doing individual scales. The currently selected main color is placed into the center. The color slots at the left or right end of the scale can be changed. Just click on them, and the color definition area's elements above will edit the respective color. Selecting a color from the scale will make it your main color. The values below these color slots define the coloring strength towards that direction. You can also define how many color slots you want to have in the color ramp. Changing the color model will create different results. The button, Pick from Screen, allows you to pick an existing color from the screen, for example an existing color in the palette or from the canvas. The color harmonies and scales are not only there for finding a single color, but also to create ramps that you want to have in your color palette. If you click with your right mouse button on any of the panels, you find a function to copy its colors. After using it, just go to the color palette window and activate the edit mode there. Go to the tab where you can move colors and use paste from the functions provided there. 
you see that the colors are placed into the color palette at the very top position. The colors are surrounded by cyan boxes which means that these colors are not finally placed into the palette. You can drag them around. When you are done, you can use the green arrow button to finally place the colors in the palette. We will come back to all these tabs later. They contain many functions to show, but before, let me show you some handy shortcuts that can be used in the simple select mode of the color palette window. You can select a color and then use the C key which means, copy. It will turn the cursor into a small crosshair. When you click on another palette slot then it will copy the color there. The S key will swap the current color with the target color. The R key will create a color ramp from the selected color to the target color. With just these three key you can quickly do some of the most important operations in the color palette, but you should also know about all the other, more complex options and functions that the palette window provides. To explore all the functions, I will again use a screen of the graphic adventure, Oscar, I'm currently working on. We enable the Edit tab of the window which will open an extra panel below the color slots containing another group of tabs. The first two tabs are there to quickly edit colors in RGB and HSL color space. Holding the control key will temporarily enable the color picker tool so that we can select the color of a pixel in the color palette. You can see that changing the color in the palette will also change all the pixel using that color palette index on the canvas. It's the same type of color control that we previously saw in the extended color edit dialog. The third tab offers a wide range of tools to manipulate multiple selected colors in the palette. There are three different color selection modes that allow you to select single colors, color ranges, and rectangle areas. With the single color selection, you click on a color to select or deselect it. Multiple colors can be selected by holding the control key and ranges by holding the shift key. The range selection mode always selects all colors in a range row by row starting with the first color you click on. The rectangle mode selects a rectangular area in the palette which can also be used to select vertical columns. Several functions can now be applied to the selected colors. You can drag them around and there are different drag modes to use. The first one will move the colors and turn the source positions into black. You can see that buttons appear with a green tick and a red cross to finalize or cancel the movement. If you want movements to automatically finalize when you end dragging, then you can enable the option Auto Commit Movement, which is the default behavior. The copy mode will create copies of the selected colors when dragging them to another position. The swap mode will swap the colors at the target position with those that have been dragged. The last option is used to really move the colors. It will remove them from their start position and insert them at the target position. You can see that this leads to color changes in the image. This is because of the movement which rearranges the colors in the palette. It's usually not wanted that moving the colors has such effects on an existing image. That's why there is the option, Apply Color Movement to Pixels, which is enabled by default. It will change the pixels matching your changes in the palette when you rearrange them. When we now drag the colors, you still see the pixels change on the canvas, but once the movement is finished, the pixels are mapped to the new positions of the colors in the palette. When you are in this area, the selection of the colors does not affect the drawing color that is currently active. This color is only changed if you are in the RGB or HSL tabs. Depending on how you work, it might be useful to also change the drawing color when you are in the area for moving colors, so that you don't have to switch between the tabs all the time. The option, Select Paint Colors in Edit Slash Move Area, will just do that. The last extra option for that area is, Auto Activate Color Edit. When activated, it will make the edit field for the hexadecimal color value to be focused whenever you click on a color. This is useful if you need to copy such color values around, or if you want to enter values for multiple colors after another. Let's go back to the area where we can move colors to continue examining more features. This button will mark all colors that are unused in the image. 
This is useful if you want to find free color slots even if they are not turned black. The other button will not mark but select these in used colors, for example to turn them black. The next group of buttons apply different operations to the selected colors. The first one just flips the color ordering. The next one can be used to turn all selected colors into gray scales. The button with the black slot icon will turn all selected colors into black. The last button in that group inverts the selected colors. And finally there are two more buttons that can be used to create color ramps in either RGB or HSL color space. The next tab enables you to change the balance of selected colors or the whole palette by modifying hue, saturation, brightness and contrast. In this example I just modify all colors. Typically, you would only select a couple of colors or color ramps to apply a change. The last tab contains the settings for the stencil. A stencil protects colors from being modified on the canvas. If I activate the stencil for this color then you can see a green selection which will surround all pixels using that color index. When drawing on pixels using that color index they are not modified. You can also invert the stencil definition so that all other colors are protected instead. The Auto Update Stencil option will redefine the protected pixels after every change on the canvas, which is enabled by default. If you switch the frame in an animation then the stencil would be redefined for the new frame if this option is enabled. If it's disabled then the stencil is only defined once, no matter if you switch a frame or modify the pixels. The tolerance value can be used to automatically select colors that are similar to the one I click on. Another element of color definitions are gradients. A gradient is a selection of colors, for example to define a color ramp. It can be used for different fill effects and paint modes or just to organize color groups. To quickly create a gradient just select colors you want to use and either use the button functions to select the operation or press the Q key. It opens the gradient creation dialog that we will check out in detail later. A new gradient has been created and activated, as you can see at top of the main window. It can now be used for drawing filled objects like circles or rectangles, or with the fill tool. By default, the fill tool will use the current paint mode for filling, but there are several other modes like gradient fills. As an example, I select vertical line contour gradient and fill some part of the office building. The gradient display has a drop down window where you can select from all the available gradients. At the bottom, you find functions to add a new gradient or to enter the gradient management, there you can arrange and edit the gradient collection of a project. The Add button creates a blank gradient and you have to add the colors by selecting them from the color palette. You can add single or multiple colors. The color palette dialog provides the same selection option as we have seen in the palette editor. Removing colors is possible as well. The color selection dialog can also be used to define a color in the palette. When creating a gradient, you can also use so-called auto slots. These are colors that are automatically taken from the palette. For every auto slot the best matching transition color from the full palette is used, no matter where it is. If you change the color palette then these auto slots are updated accordingly. We can use the function fixate auto slots to turn them into fixed colors. There are also functions to flip or sort the colors of a gradient or some selected colors. The preview area shows the gradient with different orientations and transition patterns. There are a couple of default patterns and in a later video you can see how to create your own. Halftone patterns are used to define the transition from one color to another by mixing the colors with a changing amount of pixels from the two colors. This can be used to have some organic coloring or smoother transitions. You can play with the strength of the pattern usage as well. One of the common halftone patterns is the so-called order dither, which comes with different precision modes. It creates smooth transitions between two colors and from the today's point of view it gives a retro feeling. 
With legacy hardware that had a limited set of colors it has been used to increase the virtual color depth. For example, with backgrounds like a sky or other shaded objects you can make use of such patterned gradient fills. They don't need to be used with linear fills only, because you can also use such halftone patterns while drawing which will also be shown in a separate video. That's all for now. The next video is all about what you can do with brushes. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in this series then please like and subscribe.